All right, so this is what these CPAP machines look like. And with sleep apnea, the, C, the CPAP machines are often part of the treatment plan, but sometimes patients, they complain about the masks, like That's we were right. saying before the break. Yeah, is it too much to ask Mike to get a comfortable fit? No, it's not of too much. Of course not. All right, our next guest is a respiratory therapist and works with patients to ensure comfort. From Sleep Right Solutions, Andrea Lisak. Thanks for coming on the morning nice blend. Nice to have you here. Thank Andrea. You. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about the CPAP machine in a second, but let's get to the masks because that seems to be the problem yeah. with a lot of people. There are three main types of masks, right? Right. Uh, there's a full face mask, there's a nasal mask, and then there's also a nasal pillow mask that just goes inside the, the nostrils. From left to right, let's break it down. On the left, what are we looking at right there? Which one's that? This is a full face mask here. Uh, next to that, on the gray head, is a nasal pillow mask. And then next to that mask there is a nasal mask. Uh, which, uh, what kind of patient needs which mask? Can you explain that part of it for us? Um, when a patient first comes in, you kind, of, you kind of probe them with some questions to see if they're a mouth breather or not. And if they are a mouth breather, uh, the first thing you want to do is try a full face mask with them. I kind of switch back and forth when, I, <laughs> when I'm in that sleep. I go from mouth to nose. I guess so that's why the other mask would probably work better, huh? Right. Um, if you if you breathe through your mouth at all and you can tolerate a full face mask, that is definitely the ideal mask well, for you. Well, and I say a lot of people say, well, I'm just not going to wear it because it rubs and I wake up and I've got irritation. That should never be, right? They should have a good fit, period. You shouldn't be waking up with, you know, little raw spots on your face, chapped areas. Yeah, yeah you're right. Um, if you are waking up and you have irritation on your face, then you're, you have the incorrect mask, basically. You're, it's not fitting you right or you're not putting it on right. Yeah. Um, it's, you're probably putting it on too tight or you just have completely the wrong size of mask. So there's a process that somebody goes through to figure out which type of masks fits them properly. Yeah. How, how do you figure out which mask w works for a certain patient? Uh, well, you basically, um, it's almost trial and error. You, you come in and you, you fit the, pa the patient for a mask um, and you, you send them out with the one that appears to be the best at the time. And it's not uncommon for the patient to come in three or four times for a mask exchange until they find the correct mask for them. Well, that's so. it. You, you want to use the equipment. But exactly. it's got to be comfortable in order for patients to say, yeah, I'll commit to that each night. Hey, you brought a pillow in too, Andrea. What's the story with it? Exactly. The, the pillow actually kind of is an accessory for the mask. Mm -hmm. um, it makes it easier for you to tolerate the mask. There's grooves in the pillow for the for the mask to lay against the pillow. Oh, norm I see that. So the mask and the, uh, the attached hose can kind of lay through here, right? Right. Um, so it doesn't knock the, the, the mask off your face like a normal pillow would. Do you have any other accessories? I think you brought one in here. What is this? This is actually a chin strap, and this actually would go with a nasal pillow mask or a nasal mask. And so this the gal in the middle, as we were looking at those three options. Right. This would be for a patient who could not tolerate the, the full face mask. They, their, their chin still drops open. Their, their mouth still drops open, but they can't tolerate the full face mask. Then we could try a chin strap with a nasal Provides mask. a little yeah. different type of support mm -hmm. and, and holds the mask a little mm -hmm. bit closer. How right. often should masks be replaced? There is a schedule for that, right? There, there is. Um, a mask, the whole mask itself, including the headgear, should be changed out about every six months. Mm -hmm. Uh, they and do people actually no. do that? I would say <laughs> never, I mean. never, yeah. The, people don't change them out as often as they should. Um, a, a key part to it is um, keeping it clean. Um, you really should be cleaning it. We do have some cleaning solution up there in the front. You should be cleaning it daily, actually, wiping it down. Wiping your face off before you use your mask is uh, real important to do. You want to get those oils off your face. Um, you also want to take it apart and give it a good thorough cleaning every week. Uh, the cushions should be replaced on the mask about twice a month. So that's that's another I real would, important listen, part. Listen, the people I know that have these things, they certainly aren't following that schedule. Yeah, that's <laughs> right. not, that's they're, not they're a not surprise. Doing right. they're let's, doing it. let's talk about the CPAP machine. How, how I mean, the technology has the, the yeah. gotten a lot better. I remember sitting in a hotel room with a buddy of mine who uh, has sleep apnea, and I remember this thing. And it was really yeah. loud. I couldn't sleep, but it's I like, guess it's a, they've yeah. gotten a lot quieter, haven't they? They have. Um, in fact, the combination of the new machines and the new masks, you can hardly hear them run at all anymore. Listen, we were looking online and, and saw that only, and in fact, some numbers were even higher, but the conservative estimates of people with sleep apnea, 80% of them go undiagnosed.
it's that big of a problem, but few people are actually going to the doctor and getting diagnosed with it. That's yeah. true. Um, I, and I think that, that those numbers are probably getting better. I think that physicians are probably are more aware of it mm -hmm. now, and they're sending people into the sleep clinics to get studies done. Um, but, but a lot of people don't know they have yeah, it. You're That's a respiratory therapist, so you know what are the effects of us not getting the kind of sleep we need. If somebody has sleep apnea, what are they going through throughout the day that uh, they could otherwise spare themselves? Ex uh, excessive daytime sleepiness, just co constant fatigue, probably mm -hmm. things that they are just getting used to during the day. Every day they're feeling these things that they really wouldn't have to on a daily basis, but they're just constantly fatigued and they don't even know the difference. Before we, let you, yeah, before we let you go, we want to talk about this because you brought in a special offer mm -hmm. for a lot of our viewers out there. If you visit Sleep Right Solutions and if you mention the morning blend while you're there, you can save $10. What does that uh, include? What can you put that $10 toward? You can put it toward um, any of our products that right. we have in our store a or new mask on our website. Yeah, we have um, masks. We have all. We have cleaning products. We have pillows like that. We have machines also. Well, it's a brand new place in Omaha on um, basically 78th, just north of Dodge. There, uh, you're familiar with that area. There's a good sized shopping center there, and Sleep Right Solutions is tucked there. Also online at SleepRightSolutions.com. Um, and they don't accept insurance, but that also means that because there's less processing and all that, it's 30 to 40 percent less than what you might be used to spending out there. So we're checking out. Thank you for being here today, Thank Andrea. You. Yeah, nice to meet you. In. Appreciate yeah. it.